Guys, thank you so much for being here today on the Lead Gen Underground. I have with me my new friend, Mr. Dave Brown. Dave is an SEO expert, and I actually met him through uh, our good friend, Greg Helbeck. Uh, quite a small world that it is there. You're the guy that's going to be known as starting the monster uh, Greg Helbeck into the world of real estate, right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> And so I, I know a lot of the crowd uh, that we have on our page uh, does know date does know Greg pretty well. Um, just very very good investor. He's a, a very big go giver. Um, so we're definitely friends. Tell us a little bit about what you do in terms of SEO. I know a lot of people here um, have Carrot Sites. That's like the number one platform. And um, it's my understanding that you do a lot of SEO uh, and fine tuning with Carrot Sites. Yeah. No. So so. My my main business is uh, I'm in New York first of all. Um, I've been in the business for close to like 20 years. I was an agent for 13. Give up my license to to do real estate investing full time, you know. And um, one of my first wholesale deals happened to be someone who found me online. Um, they basically Googled a local area, had a Google Places page set up, and that turned into like a thirty-five thousand dollar profit. And then. I've always gravitated to me, always gravitated to being like the internet and online marketing and generating leads off the internet. And so when I did that first deal, uh, I saw what was possible. And I, I realized like I had the opportunity to kind of have my own unique footing in this space. And so I ran with it. And um, for a while I was doing real estate investor websites on the side as a side hustle. And then I transitioned, I discovered Carrot um, about uh, eight years ago. I knew Trevor Mock uh, beforehand from another service that he provided. So I knew that, uh, knew, I knew what kind of entrepreneur Trevor was. And I knew that he was going to deliver, a, you know, a, a kick butt product. And I loved what the product was. And so I moved my entire business over to his platform. And I encouraged all my clients at that time to, to do the same. Um, and I've been a Carrot member ever since, and I really focused on building exactly what Carrot teaches and what I you know, knew beforehand was creating all those targeted city-specific pages. And so that's kind of what my focus has been the last seven years is just uh, when I signed up for Carrot, all I did is I, I went to the coffee shop every day. I was there from nine to three while my kids were in school, and I just built out content. City, city specific pages targeted around the keywords, we buy houses, sell my house fast. And I made the, the decision that I was gonna rank number one in New York for anywhere in the state. Really? Whether it was, you know, not anywhere, but you know, within my main market and then where it matters most, most in terms of density and population, you know, New York City, Long Island, Bronx, Brooklyn, Queens. Um, and that's, that's what I did now. Now I'm kind of expanding into other um, you know, the tri-state area, which is like Northern New Jersey and Connecticut. Got it. Okay. Very good. So when you switched over from, uh, your own websites to carrot, um, what is the biggest difference? So if someone out there is, um, has their own site, not on carrot, and then someone has carrot, what do you foresee as the big difference right now? Like what's that big split? Well, look, carrot has a, they have a team, right? They've been doing this for a while. They have, they have it dialed in. Like they do all the split testing to make, you know, with the headlines and do the split testing with the colors and the content and the ease of use. And, you know, as a, um, someone who knows websites and who built websites for other investors, you know, the main website platform that a lot of people build websites on is WordPress. Right. And, you know, that's having a self-hosted WordPress that come, that can be challenging for a lot of people because not only do you have to get the GoDaddy name, but then now you have to set up hosting and then install WordPress and the WordPress has updates all the time. And then do you have the right plugins to, to utilize WordPress the best it can be used? Sometimes you'll get spammers and they'll crash your site, like all this stuff that you have to deal with that you don't have to deal with when you use Carrot. It's simple, you get the domain, you hook up the domain to the website and all you focus at that point is on content. Very good. I think most people on here already have Carrot. So assuming we're on Carrot, I'd like to unpack a few things. If someone's at the beginner stage, intermediate stage, and then kind of like advanced stage, what are a few of the tactics you would recommend? So I know building backlinks and really getting domain authority uh, are some of the big things like meta things that you focus on. 
someone's at a beginner level and they just have registered their site and are trying to rank in their, uh, in their market, what would you recommend that they start out doing? So the first thing is, you know, if you're serious about this business and building it, and this is a long-term thing for you, it's not just like a, a side thing. You know, first and foremost, whether you have care, if you don't have carrot or a website, you need to get one, right? The business that's in business today has a website. So if you don't have a website, in my opinion, you're really not in business. It's, it's the, you know, it's the um, digital business card, right? You got to have it and it builds credibility. It builds authority. Trevor talks about this all the time. So it's carrot. So that would be the first thing I would do is make sure you have a website. Make sure the website name is congruent with what you do, right? So this should have some type of, so if someone reads your website name, your domain name, they should instantly know or have some sort of idea of what business you're in, right? So that's why you see a lot of people use home buyers or property solutions, right? Um, you know, real estate group, um, you know, uh, we buy houses, right? Sell your house fast and in their domain name, because it tells people what it is that you do, what service you provide. Um, and then I would definitely really focus on the customization aspect uh, as much as you can, because you need to set yourself apart from all the other carrot users that are not setting themselves apart, right? They're just taking the, the uh, um, you know, right out of the box, they're taking what Carrot provides, but they're not taking any additional steps to do anything else to the website. And their website looks like everybody else's. So focus on, you know, real, you know, focus on treating your business like a business. So get a professional logo done with the right, you know, with good, you know, soft, appealing colors. You can look up um, in marketing. There's there's specific colors that attract and repel, you know, your customers. So look at those type of things add local pictures into your website of whatever market that you're in. Um, one big thing that a lot of people miss that I see all the time with carrot sites is they totally ne neglect the about us page. Mm, absolutely. Uh, there's no, there's no owner picture or company, you know, or team picture. Uh, if you have partnerships, you know, there, none of the pictures are there. There's no bio. Um, there's no like um, real uh, specific um, like voice to what it is that you do. Uh, it's not personalized at all. Sure. And so I would really focus on uh, customization, good logos, local pictures, and really spend a lot of time on that about us page, putting yourself out there, making it look like you know a business. Okay, very good. And at this basic level, when they're starting out um, and we're custom, starting out a lot of the customization, uh, do you think more of the content should be around sort of location pages and blog pages or more like video content? Uh, all the above. Okay. Yeah, all the above. I mean, content is king. It's not, you know, it's not cliche. It's, it's true. Um, but it's also not about quantity. It's also about quality, too. So, you, you know, there's a, there's a fine line there. And so if you can uh, absolutely building the city specific pages in your local area or whatever market, if you're doing virtual wholesaling, whatever it is, is key um, because it builds the foundation uh, for you to get found online. Um, and then obviously focusing on the blog aspect in terms of posts and those posts should be built around uh, your elevator pitch, like, you know, your value proposition, how you serve, the customer, how do you serve, you know, motivated sellers, cash buyers, so on and so forth. And then you can turn those things into video posts too, right? You could take that same type of content that you would normally be, it would be written and you could shoot a video with a, with a two to three minute script. And then you can put that on YouTube, optimize it. Right. And then now carrot has that tool that you could put that YouTube in and it, it transcribes you know, what you said on YouTube into a blog post and you have both. So I would recommend all those things. Okay, very good. I, I have a feeling that the intermediate and advanced tactics are going to fall kind of under this next question. What tools are you looking at for keywords or key phrases to find in the local market to build your page around or to see what your competitors are doing? What would you recommend that other people use? I would recommend don't overthink it. Okay. You know, this isn't like uh this isn't a complicated thing. We're not building rocket ships here. Like people, 
you know, when, when you're in our business, you need three, three things. You need motivated sellers, right? You need cash and, and you need buyers. And so don't, don't overcomplicate it. Trevor gives you exactly what the keywords are. So just focus on the top three and build your site around those specific keywords. Cause in just in, in um, just by doing that, you're automatically going to probably insert naturally other keywords that Google will also pick up. So if you just focus on the big three, that'll really pay you know, big dividends for you. So like the biggest three are somewhere. Did I answer your whole question? I don't know. Somewhere yeah. Else. So we buy houses, sell my house fast, uh, cash home buyers. Um, you know, those would be the three things I would focus on. Sell my house fast, sell your house fast. We buy houses, cash home buyers. Okay. Very right? good. So, so that, that, that's just the, that's the main keyword, right? So you, um, there's keyword and there's long tail keyword. So whenever you add your local city specific area to it, so we buy houses is, is a main keyword. It's going to be really hard for you to rank nationally for that keyword, right? But because you're a local market or you're virtual wholesaling in a local market, attaching we buy houses, um, Miami, we buy houses, Fort Lauderdale, we buy houses, Brooklyn, you're taking a very targeted broad keyword that has a lot of competition to narrowing it down to a keyword that's very specific that will have less competition than the main keyword. And so that's how you want to build your city specific pages. That's how you want to build out your content, um, inherited houses, inherited house buyer, right? There's all, you could add your area, your city to that as well. Okay. Very good. Um, so you don't target a number of keywords. You're just looking at the big ones and kind of expanding off of those. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Do you have, when it comes to pages, do you have on one domain, do you have a number of pages that you try to rank? Yeah. So those are the top, those would be, those would be the top markets. Right. And so how I did it and how I, I, uh, instruct people to go about it is what's the big, what's the 800 pound gorilla in the room? that you can go after, right? And so that would be your big city or state. So for me, I decided I wanted to rank for the state, right? I knew if I could rank for the state, for We Buy Houses New York, Sell My House Fast New York, if I could get to number one, that authority and juice would trickle down to all the other pages on my website, just naturally. Uh, and then that, you know, so being at the top for We Buy Houses New York, all the other pages would be lifted up as well as that one. Uh, increased its rankings. Got it. Okay. And did you end up ranking number one in New York? Yes. Yep. Wow. That's amazing. How long did that take for you? Uh, probably 12 to six, yeah, 12 to 18 months. Really? Yeah. Okay. And just so everyone's aware of the amount of work that goes behind that, I mean, how much new content are you producing every day or every week to try to get? Yeah. I mean, and so, so that's the key thing, how element here, like disclaimer, right? Like, you know, the importance of having a website is huge, bar none. What Trevor and the team at Carrot teaches is great. And, you know, if you don't have a Carrot website, I highly recommend one, but there's also resources out there, YouTube, you can learn about SEO and, and strategies like that. But, just having a website is not going to bring top rankings for you, you know, by itself. Like it takes, it's marketing. It takes work. It takes energy. It takes, you know, um, takes a budget, you know, so it's a process and it's a process that because of depending on the market that you're in and because of today's competition, right? There's a lot of other people that are doing what we're doing out there. And if you're in a highly competitive market, you know, you already have people um, ahead of you who are ranking. It's going to, so it, like Phoenix, for instance, right? If someone here is new and they're in the Phoenix market and they want to rank number one for We Buy Houses Phoenix, you have to understand that that's going to be a very uh, daunting undertaking. Like it's going to take time, but if you're committed to it, and that's your target. You just have to, you have to make sure you have it in your budget each and every month to start build, you know, to lay that foundational content piece that I talked about and then really focus on building backlinks after that and then doing it in a consistent manner um, over a three to six month period and beyond. You know, like I, what I did over the last seven years, I literally did for seven years. Like I didn't just, 
focus six months months on SEO and link building and have a budget for it and then stop, right? Because once you stop, other people can come in and take your rankings. It's like if you're going to do direct mail, you never mail out just one campaign. You don't send a letter once. You send it three, four, five, maybe six times, right? And then once that campaign is over, what do you do again? You mail again, right, to a new list. And this is no different. Same thing with PPC. You don't, sh you don't shut that off. You don't shut off your Facebook marketing. This is no different. You know, you don't shut it off. If you're going to commit to it and you're going to focus on the backlinking and the, and the content creation, it's got to be weekly. It's got to be monthly. Got as it. long okay. as you plan on being in this business. Yeah. Got it. Very good. So you said number one in Phoenix, and I, you know, I don't even know what that would take, but I know it would take a lot to become number one in Phoenix, probably the hottest market in the country or one of the top. If I was going to hire you to give me the number one in Phoenix, what kind of budget are we talking about? And then what kind of like time expectations do you think we can expect? That seems like a really tall task. Yeah. Um, I would, I don't know if I would have an answer for that right, right now for you. I mean, that would, you know, I'd have to really dig into it and, and see. Okay. Yeah, no problem. I, yeah, I would say you'd have to probably be willing to spend at least a couple thousand dollars a month to get to that point. Sure, absolutely. And that's all in content creation, backlinks, and things like that. Or are you also lumping in pay per click there? Uh, no, no, pay, no pay per click. Okay. It's not proven that pay per click has any benefit to, to search engine optimization or organic rankings. Sure. I mean, the additional okay. the additional traffic is beneficial for sure, and I'm I would guess that there's probably some um, some additional benefit because people are going to be returning to your site or maybe re-searching your site in Google, you know, those type of actions will help. You know, the ultimate job of the search engines, right, is to give the, their customer, which is the person who's searching, the best experience possible. And they want to deliver the best results back. Um, and so that's what you want to really think about when you're, when you're building out your site and your content and doing SEO, right? And that's why backlinks are so powerful, which we really haven't talked about, right? It's the, it, it was literally the number one, um, the, the biggest ranking factor above everything else in the eyes of the search engines is backlinks. Okay. So a back, backlink is essentially a link from another website of authority to your website. So imagine if you had Forbes or um, CNN or Fox News or Entrepreneur Magazine or Success Magazine linking in an article to your website, right? The power of that, right? You have this huge website with a lot of authority, a lot of domain authority, a lot of power. A lot of people go visit it and they have an article about how people can sell their house fast without an agent and it points to your website. You know, so that's a very powerful link. That is a backlink. And there's all kinds of websites out there that are in line um, in the real estate industry that you could have uh, guest posts put on um, an article about what you do and how your business is. And, and, and there's a link in there that links back to your website. And you want to have as many of those as possible. And so you can pay for those positionings and those articles. Um, but there's also some low hanging fruit that you can use too. That's, that's free. So just, posting your content on your Facebook page, um, you know, using Instagram, uh, Twitter, there's, there's free sites like Blogger, Medium, um, YouTube, right, is owned by Google. So just publishing uh, videos about your business and what you do with a link back. Those are all backlinks that, that will not, they don't cost you anything. Hmm. Okay, that's really good. So you just mentioned a few there that a lot of people use. And actually, I wasn't even aware that the socials count as backlinks. But Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Any, yeah, oh. any web, any web, any web 2.0 property, right? Okay. You know, you, essentially, you're putting a link there, and someone is actually, um, you know, they're clicking on it, so that traffic is is in turn hitting your website. Google will see that there's, you know, there's something called social signals, right? So it's another it, that is a ranking factor. So if Google sees that your content is getting uh, shared and liked on various platforms it gives them a social signal that oh wow look people are interacting with this site that's about buying houses and that's in real estate oh look we're getting all these backlinks to this site you know we should start you know, 
basically awarding them accordingly in the search engines because people are obviously in need of their service, right? Yeah. Other websites are linking to them. That must mean they're credible. Absolutely. Right. So past those initial few, um, if someone is just starting out or really starting to, to tune in um, and trying to get some added backlinks, how would you recommend someone goes about that strategy? I would start with YouTube. YouTube. Really, first off. And, and to be frank, like it's not something that I've really, I mean, I have, I've done YouTube, a lot of YouTube videos um, in this business and other businesses, but it's not really a strategy that I focused on in this business. Um, I, not that I haven't focused on it. I would say I could be doing a lot more with it. Okay. But if I had to do to do all over again and I was someone new or someone who's just starting out with SEO, that would be the first place because Google owns YouTube, right? And so if you can create a really good two to three minute elevator pitch and you know your value proposition and you basically replicate that video like you would replicate a city specific page on your carrot website, and basically you do the same script, but you just swap out a few words with the area or the keyword, right, that you're looking to twit. And maybe you have three or four scripts that you can use and you just repeat them based on the area that you're in. And then you link that particular video back to the carrot page, right, that that video represents. That would be right out of the gate the first thing that I would do. Wonderful. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. And then when you're talking about different markets, up in New York, are you using major cities or is it just different metros that you're like creating those content specific or those uh, specific uh, location pages for? Yeah, I've done every, like everything, like, you know, some of the bigger uh, towns, um, neighborhoods, counties, and then obviously the bigger cities. Okay. Yeah, I go, I just, I go deep. I just go as deep as I, not, I mean, not deep as I can, but deep where it makes sense, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So and I, I, and I kind of attribute it to like, um, you know, like real estate agents, like, you know, you know, maybe I don't know how many people were an agent or are an agent, but there's a, you know, there's a term called farming, right? And so you would go around and farm a specific neighborhood. And that neighborhood would be well known within that local area, uh, you know, that this is the kind of homes that are here. These are the kind of people that live there. Um, and it, so it's a local location that people are familiar with. So if you have that in your in your markets, you know you should be you should do it, be doing a city specific page on that area. Okay, that's really good advice, guys. We're coming to the back end of the show. If you have any specific questions, please do drop them in the comments. Casey asked, Dave, what's your website address? Do you want to give one out to him? Sure. Um, for my for my home buying company. I think that's what he's asking. Yeah. So sellnowhomebuyers.com. Sell now homebuyers.com so now homebuyers.com okay awesome dave when is the time to move into uh if you have money uh set aside for a seo budget when is the time to then add in sem i know you have to optimize your page and you have to uh, really build some authority um i think but when's the time to add in that sem budget and then how would you recommend that that is allocated uh, i would I would be doing both simultaneous, simultaneously, actually, you know, and allocating a specific part of your budget to both. Okay. You know, and, you know, look, you know, when I was, when I was coaching people on wholesaling and, and they would come in and they wouldn't even have any, any budget to start, right. To even do any kind of marketing. Like they just, and they expected, they, they expected they could do a, a house flip in 30 days. You know, that's not necessarily accurate. Like, you know, you have two things to build this business. You have time and money, you know, and if you have less money, then you need to spend more time. You need to roll up your sleeves and do the nitty gritty, right? If you have less time then, and you have a, you have money, then you can spend money to get to the place that you need to be. Ideally, you want to be able to leverage both equally and whether it's you doing the work or someone else doing work. But if you have, um, SEM, SEO, PPC, like if, if you, I would pick three or four channels that you could focus on and do consistently and stick with that. Like I, the biggest mistake I see investors make is they, they get into too many channels, right? But you don't want to have just one either, right? Because the worst number in business is one, because if that one thing goes away, you're left with nothing. Yeah, absolutely. 
Okay, so you mentioned SEM and pay-per-click. Is there really a big difference there? Um, I mean, I guess not, but, you know, SEO is really, you know, for me, my, my specialty, I don't do a lot of PP, PPC. Sure. You know, I do a little, my base, my ad spend in terms of paid traffic is basically through Facebook with retargeting. So I, I don't do any more direct mail. Um, I basically just, I focus on what I built over the last years. I continue that process to today, you know, to the, to, you know, now. And then as visitors hit my website, I get leads. I retarget every visitor that hits my website via Facebook ads and Facebook retargeting. And that's basically my business. Got it. That's beautiful. That's a, a nice little segment into the last piece there. Talk about your Facebook retargeting ad or ads or funnel and just kind of how you retarget there. Is it through video or uh, what's your strategy there? Besides, the Yeah, so I have, I have a retargeting ad that's a video that I actually recently just changed because of the coronavirus, right? It's just a video of me speaking to that prospect who's going to see it again and letting them know that, hey, we're still buying houses in this, in this you know, pandemic during this time. And um, that if they still need to sell, we can still help them. You know, we, you, know, you can see the video if you go to my website. You'll probably get retargeted, right? But <laughs> it's simple. It's short. You know, you'll want to make sure you're concise with your messaging, especially on Facebook ads and PPC um, or, you know, in terms of doing video. You don't want it to be too long. You really want to keep it within that two minute mark. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I could, I can't really speak more on, on PPC and SE, SE, like that's not, you know, that's not my expertise. That's not what I do. Sure. I appreciate yeah. that. Uh, Casey just said he hired a guy to do SEO and how basically, how does he know uh, that the guy is doing what he should be doing? He came highly recommended these rank sites at number one. So there's trust, but he said, but that's not enough. How can he check in on this guy and make sure he's actually doing what he's supposed to? Well, ask the guy if he has any, if he can provide any, any, like any um, fulfillment, like if he can actually show, you know, if he's doing backlinking, have him show what the links are, you know, where's the articles, where, you know, if it's any backlinking that you should do should be content based. So where is that piece of content hosted and show me where the link is coming from. Got it. Okay. So that would be one. And then number two is um, my biggest, you know, I know we're running out of time here, but if you're actually going out there to find someone to help you with SEO and they tell you that they, and they're selling you that they can guarantee you top rankings run because anyone guarantee you and guaranteeing top rankings in SEO is lying to you because there is so many factors that you cannot control because Google for one could change the algorithm. Right. And you have no idea when that's going to happen uh, Two, the biggest, you know, your biggest home buyer in the market could come in and, and decide to spend five grand a month on backlinks and SEO. And all of a sudden you get blindsided and you, you drop. So you can't get, if so again, do not listen to anyone who's saying they can guarantee you top rankings. And I said this, I think I mentioned this to you, Joshua, but if you stick with the process, you educate yourself on SEO, you follow a lot of the tools and the trainings that CARA provides. You follow a lot of the stuff that we talked about here today. I will not guarantee you top rankings, but I, what I can guarantee you is that you'll get results and you'll definitely do deals from it. Nice. I love that. Okay. Last question and then we'll go. Vic says, what's your biggest marketing challenge at the moment? My biggest marketing challenge at the moment is probably just being able to expand my footprint even more in the, in the, uh, Time frame that I'd like to really expand it in. You know, I wish I wish SEO was a, was like the results came faster. Um, that's why people recommend while you're building out the SEO platform and your website that you have another another marketing channel that can generate leads today. Absolutely. Pick up so the that's, phone. That's my biggest struggle. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Hey, that's awesome. I know that you help other people. Uh, with their SEO. So tell us just a, a second about that and then where everyone can follow you um, online and about your podcast. Your podcast looks really, really awesome. Um, uh, super impressive. So just give that cool. a plug really quick. Yeah. So you can go to davebrown.net. You can go to offer.davebrown.net. I have a little free PDF or whatever you can download. Um, I do work with other real estate investors, but I'm like really selective. I only work with like five clients at a time. This is just something that I do on the side. 
um, to teach people, to show people and do what exactly what I've done for myself here in New York for other people, but I'm not looking to build like a big business out of it. I mean, I have my own business, right? And I have the podcast like that you mentioned that is really my, my focus and what I love to do. So the podcast is American Snippets. We've interviewed all kinds of people from all across the country, Elena Cardone, Bedros Koulian, Kent Clothier, Trevor Mock, uh, Robert O'Neill, the guy who shot Osama Bin Laden, um, everyday Americans, veteran entrepreneurs, uh, celebrities, and the podcast is all about the American spirit. It's about living the American dream, living life on your own terms, positivity, possibility, patriotism. We try to leave politics out of it. Uh, and it's, uh, it's cool. It's something that we love to do. My fiance is a gold star wife. Her husband was killed in Iraq 13 years ago. Um, and, uh, so we're doing this together and she's the, she's the star, you know, she does most of the interviews on our show. So. Wow. Isn't that cool? What a story. Well, Dave, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate your time and your knowledge. That was just unbelievable. Um, really great information there. Thanks for dropping those gold nuggets. Great talking with you. Yeah, man. Anything else I can do to help? I mean, I could be happy to put together a free list of resources that I can give to you. You can put up in the group if you want. Hey, if you could send that, that would, that would be unbelievable. That would be unbelievable. Awesome. Love to do it. Dave, thanks so much for your time. Thanks for coming in today, guys. Uh, thanks for right, everyone. The this elevator is going up. Peace. Good luck, everybody. Crush it.